Welcome to our Saskatchewan Deep Winter Greenhouse Tour. I hope you enjoy. So this is our Deep Winter Greenhouse in Saskatchewan, Canada. Latitude 53 gardening zone three um, on the outside is twin wall polycarbonate um, I did it at a 45 degree angle all of the structure on the south side um, it's designed this way the whole front has a um, four foot raised bed to the height of the windows so you can grow things quite high in there you're never hitting your head on it so I did it with a pony wall uh, about a three foot pony wall and then used bus windows that I got and I can open those all from the outside instead of the inside so I'm not reaching over the raised bed you just walk along open it up in the spring summer fall every morning and evening you can get to it easy um, there's a place for the snow to accumulate um, so the windows never get covered up and then where I'm at the Winter solstice sun angle is 14 degrees above elevation, so it's really, really low. So that raised bed still catches sunlight from the um, windows here. And then the top structure, I'll take you inside in a minute, is uh, just built like any standard high efficient building. There's R60 insulation up there, and it goes back uh from from that part 32 feet back into there this comes out 11 feet uh the structure because there's no snow load uh is four foot on center um and we have high winds every single day here on the prairies so it's very strong i didn't want to use just poly uh, because of the wind factor. And polycarbonate diffuses the light, doesn't reflect the light like glass. Um, it's probably the best product and I'm hoping to get about 25 years out of the polycarbonate. So let's go inside the greenhouse. It is attached to my large farm shop um, did that for a variety of reasons, but let's check it out. So this main structure is 64 feet by 32 feet, the super insulated um, building. And then in the front, it goes out 11 feet. It's at a 45 degree angle. So two by six construction, four foot on center. So you want the least amount of material possible because you don't want any shade from the sun, but strong enough for a wind load. I don't have to worry about snow load. And then this front bed is four feet and it's also designed, I can put slats on the two sills um, to have all my tray starters, but it's this is solid. Um, uh, really good soil like two and a half three feet deep so all those bus windows they open from the outside so twin wall polycarbonate exterior and on the inside is a six mil uv resistant greenhouse poly um, and how i designed this uh, so the the double wall poly greenhouses they have to have a blower in between to make that air gap this requires no blower it's just five and a half inches of air space in between which is a significant insulator so the twin wall polycarbonates in r 1.7 ish uh, like almost as good as a double pane window and then that poly in the air space it's got a better insulation factor than um, the, the best window money can buy essentially 
I don't know exactly what it is, but it's working really good. And it's, so the condensation, it's humid in the greenhouse dry outside. It'll run down and into the bed. Just right in there. And if there's any condensation in between, it uh, has nowhere to trap. It also just goes down into the, the bed, like on that sill that sloped a bit and into the bed. Um, in the summertime, I just roll up the bottom and put some clamps so I can open up the entire base of the gr uh, greenhouse for airflow. Um, and same with the ends as well. These are some opening windows with poly on the inside. I just roll it up, clamp it, and I can open up all those windows. Uh, so the whole exterior of the, the building, all under here, there is a trench I dug four feet deep, 16 inches wide, that's packed full of rigid insulation to protect from the frost. And then on the outside of the building, I also dig down outside and put rigid insulation at an angle like this to protect that frost from coming in as well. So this entire area inside is just a massive heat sink protected from the elements outside, the frost creeping in. Um, there's no climate battery system with air tubes underneath. Uh, I decided not to do that because of the cost as well as I don't think it works as good where I'm at. It's too cold um, as they say that it does. So I spend all my money always on insulation. So this main building is the same construction techniques as any commercial building or even a house. Like you could make this into a house if you want. But in the roof, is so it's a low slope roof it's six mil white silage tarp used as vapor barrier every single staple is acoustical and uh, taped because of the high humidity you don't want ever to touch your structure so it's very 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 well sealed up uh, better than most houses and then in that system is uh, two sheets of four inch rigid insulation, white polystyrene. Um, so eight inches of that tight to the poly. And then on top of that is an R28 rolled out bat insulation. And then on top of that is the airspace that vents at both the, uh, the lower eave and the top for just proper building structure code, right? The walls are nine inches thick of solid styrofoam. It's a post and beam construction. So these posts go down seven feet, are sitting on concrete, uh, tamped with P-Rock. And then the beam is up here with hangers because you don't want any shade from the sun here. And the beam, is, the tr uh, trusses sit on top of the beam at the back. So you got insulation 16 inches that are four feet underground, nine inches. So I have an R48 insulation in my walls and an R60 insulation in my roof. Effectively, my only heat loss is maybe a little bit that door, but then the south portion. And so my design is, it was years of designing um, every research paper, YouTube video, book I could find, any piece of information. And I built this to my latitude and my situation. So I live in one of the sunniest places in Canada. Um, so we have a lot of sunlight, but a lot of the Chinese style greenhouse, it comes up like this, poly all the way to the back. And that makes no sense because the sun is never here. In the winter time, the sun is at a 14 degree angle um, at the winter solstice and in the at the summer solstice it's at a 60 degree angle so the way I designed this half of this in-ground bed 
is full sun year round. So the winter solstice or summer solstice is right here. And the winter solstice hammers the entire greenhouse except for the top three feet. And the top three feet is where on top of pallet racking, I'm going to be having my rainwater collection. And I'm able to collect all the rainwater off of a really, really large shop and a large greenhouse, all with um, metal roofing. So at, no asphalt contamination or anything. And I'm able to collect all that rainwater so I can, and store it up high so it's like a battery. Uh, I can use gravity fed system for both my greenhouse and then my gardens outside. In the summertime, of course. And in the winter, you can't really collect rainwater. Uh, so the greenhouse is working really good so far. For heating, all it is is the sun is primary with thermal mass in the greenhouse to hold it overnight. Uh, secondary is the wood stove. So this winter, every essentially every night, I'll have a fire in there. And it's an uh, undersized stove for what I need, so I might put a bigger one. And then third is a high-efficient, 96% efficient natural gas, 80,000 BTU furnace. So again, quite small. The last house I built, I think, was a 200,000 BTU furnace for a house. And this is... Uh, well, a 3,000 square foot greenhouse. So it's, uh, but it, it's it's keeping up those minus 50 nights that we had. Uh, the wood stove and the, the furnace were running pretty good at night, but uh, during the day when it's minus 50-ish and the sun's out like today, it gets to plus 35-ish Celsius inside. So it's not even done yet. I'm still doing the building envelope, but I have a few tests that I'm doing. So I have 50 of these food grade black steel drums, and these are filled up with water as a little test for this year. And I have a temperature probe in there to see what temperature the water is getting. And I'm getting almost 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So about 22-ish degree or no, sorry, that's my fish tank. This is getting 76-ish uh, Fahrenheit on a warm day, which is like 24, 25 Celsius. So that's my thermal mass. So once the concrete is in, uh, the, these are going two layers high, the entire back wall of the greenhouse. So how it works is in the winter time when it's coldest, the sun angle is like this it hammers the entire greenhouse. As it warms up outside, the sun is moving like this all the way to the summer solstice, which is way over here. So when it's, this is just designed for the location of the sun and my latitude. When it get getting colder outside, the sun starts to hit this concrete. My concrete is going to be painted black with uh, in-floor heat PEX pipes filled with rainwater. Uh, no insulation because the entire ground in here is also a heat sink. But when it's cold outside, the sun hits that black concrete. The whole thing getting uh, concreted here, eventually it's going to turn at the, at the summer solstice from black paint to white paint. Because in the summertime, I don't want the heat. Uh, so it's going to be white concrete. And then when I want it, uh, paint it black concrete and those black barrels. And then also the rainwater collection, I don't want the sun to hit it, so it'll be always shaded, but it'll still still have a thermal, um, thermal mass uh, to it, but without the sun heating it, just the ambient uh, moisture. As well, once the concrete's done, we're uh, going to not have livestock. I just have rabbits in here and a few chickens for a couple tests I'm doing for the winter and a small aquaponics as a test uh, with just some uh, pond koi fish in there because they're forgiving while I figure things out and a small hydroponic I don't like hydroponic systems that much but the temperature I'm getting with the water without any heat uh, water heater is uh, gonna be enough to 
have tilapia or almost enough to raise tilapia prop properly, which is a warmer water fish. So I'm pretty happy about that. I thought I might have to do trout or either have to heat the water. But anyways, after the concrete, we're gonna have one or two 10 to 12 foot diameter above ground pools, three or four feet high. And that's gonna be our uh, small fish farm set up for in here. And I'm not going to do a large hydroponics, but I'm going to filter out their waste um, and use that wastewater as fertilizer for both inside the greenhouse and outside. So in the, again, in the uh, winter time, that sun will be hitting that water and nicely warming it up. When it gets warmer outside, the, the fish will be, uh, and all the thermal mass and the black concrete, everything will be shaded. So when it's in the heat of summer, when it's plus 30 outside, all of that water uh, thermal mass and concrete thermal mass will act as a cooling. Uh, it'll cool the greenhouse because it's just a mass. The sun won't be hitting it. So all those barrels at the back will be shaded, but filled with water. So just that water is going to be cooler than the air. It'll, it'll cool the atmosphere uh, in the greenhouse in the summer and at night in the winter on a day like today. Well, here you can see the sun angle. So the, there's almost the only shady part is here. Um, whenever the sun shines, it hits all that mass and just all night long quickly radiates back. And I like water. It's the, the fastest heat transfer uh, mechanism. Uh, so better than concrete or brick, which would be a much slower to heat up, much slower release. And so the in-floor heat PEX piping that I'm going to put in, I have the piping in a large shop next to it that I actually don't utilize. All I'm going to be doing is running, filling it with rainwater and running a uh, recirculation pump. Um, just 24 seven to move water in between the buildings. So on a day like today with the sun, the concrete and water is gonna get hot. I can transfer some of that heat cause it's almost gonna be too hot in the greenhouse uh, pretty soon. Um, I don't wanna release energy outside and get rid of it. I wanna store some of that mass into the shop concrete. And all night long I can that circulating pump it just runs 24 7 it'll come back into the greenhouse wherever it needs it it'll equalize all the thermal mass as well i like uh attaching buildings together so i have a greenhouse and a shop they're both super high efficient but when it's minus 45 outside and the greenhouse is overheating i can just simply open up doors and a couple windows I might even put a fan in between and I can take the heat from the, in the air and humidity into the, the shop, which would be cooler and very, very dry. So they both equalize and I can play around with that. So instead of just opening up the door to the outside, which I might still have to, to do depending on the day, but I want to steal that heat and put it in the shop. So essentially these massive, massive buildings, especially when the sun's shining and uh, I, nothing runs. No, there's no furnaces running and they're, they get hotter than, uh, so uh, yeah. The whole problem is storing everything at nighttime. Um, so that's where the thermal mass and super insulated walls come in. I might look into the Chinese style greenhouses uh, that use a nighttime roll up blanket to blanket the entire greenhouse at night. I might look into it, but it's actually working very well so far. I don't think I'm going to bother with that. So, so these are concrete forms. This is clay with packed gravel. And I dug down at a sharp angle, three feet, and brought in soil that I've been manufacturing myself outside. So composted wood chips, uh, leaves, uh, manure in there, 
uh, topsoil and just a uh, large compost pile. So I have a lot of years of nutrients and a lot of depth. So this allows me to have full-size trees in here. These are dwarf banana trees, uh, two different varieties. Uh, there's an orange, a tangerine, a fig, a grapefruit. We have some lemon trees in pots, uh, mango trees in pots that we're gonna be able to do. Uh, plant in the ground or in pots uh, at the back. This banana is doing extremely well. So we, all winter long we have growth, however slow, but this is another shoot. It's gonna open up into a leaf right away and flop out. So the banana is very happy. And as you can see, we have no lighting whatsoever. So things are obviously just with the less light growing slow but everything is growing and seems to be very happy. Uh, I am going to be putting in some uh, grow lights, LED grow lights, to supplement an extra hour in the morning, uh, hour or two in the morning, hour or two in the evening in this dead part of winter. So this is uh, beginning of January right now and very minimal light. For ventilation, I don't want a huge electric bill. So I, I ran electrical and I have three fans. They're 60 watt fans. So they only pull 180 watts and they go 20, 24 seven. Now I might add a couple more, but it's it seems to be enough. The plants aren't getting laggy or anything, but this is how this works. I'm blowing air up here it's taking the hot air, blowing it in the plants. Uh, the plants are moving, it's enough airflow, and it, it comes like this. So what I'm getting is a airflow in the entire building in the wintertime like this. In the summertime, I won't need any fans or electricity, even on the hot days. The greenhouse isn't big enough and it has enough ventilation, so I can open up this completely side windows completely, whole bottom here completely. And then the biggest is my big overhead door. This goes into a unheated portion of the shop where at further back is another overhead door. So on the north side, the cool air, uh, and that's usually where the wind comes, comes through here. It's, it's no hotter in the greenhouse once it's opened up in the, the hottest day of the summer, no hotter in here than it is outside with no fans. So if there's a day that's super, absolutely no wind and just dead heat, I might have to do some fans or something like that. Uh, what else can I say about this? Okay, we got ventilation, super insulated construction. Yeah, so I, I thought about not doing a video until um, I was completely done, but this has taken me, uh, built it myself, uh, one and a half years part-time. So in man hours, there I have probably have a thousand or 1200 man hours building it so far myself. So no help, not even for one hour from anyone, just, just me. Uh, next is concrete in the spring. I'm gonna do some plumbing. I have uh, drains. The plan is for to have our start on the nice warm concrete. And then by the time it's getting shaded, all those starts will be planted outside. So I don't need to be starting in trays anymore. So all the tray system can be here. And then as it gets warmer outside, I don't need this space anymore. Um, and also, so it's about half in, in ground or a little less than half in ground. Uh, anything grown in really good living soil compost with it has all the minerals, nutrients and flavor. I do not like hydroponic vegetables. They taste like mush to me and they're lacking most of the food value actually. Uh, so I like the soil grown and then this concrete. So I have a work area here. I can process, uh, we can do our planting at the back and on the side. 
uh, drains in the floor for keeping it nice and clean. Uh, the concrete's gonna take down humidity in the greenhouse uh, and it's also gonna take down dust. So every time you walk, you're kicking up dust in here. Uh, but I need a nice area to work and process so I can have moving tables, gonna have a three compartment sink. Uh, and, and that's essentially the extent of the processing we'll be, we'll be doing, just raw food. But right in, right in the shop, these, both these doors open, I can run carts through. Um, is our commercial kitchen and uh, freeze dryers and set up like that for if we ever do get into a value added product and get the government involved for getting all the certifications for that as well. So, okay, I think I covered it. So today it's about minus 25 outside. It is about 10 30 in the morning and it's 28 degrees celsius inside the greenhouse uh, so i guess right now we planted uh, end of october beginning of november we have little cucumbers starting there's a zucchini that we could actually pick already the beans are ready to eat our little strawberries some of them are taken pretty good We've had tomatoes all, all year. Uh, these are mostly flowers for my wife's uh, uh, flower business that we're doing starting with this year. And then some flowers in ground. Uh, this banana, hoping to that it produces in uh, another year or two, but it should get as high as the ceiling. Same with this banana. We had our first orange uh, Christmas Eve we picked it best orange I've ever had we have tangerines coming mojito mint grapefruit um, eventually uh, rosemary herbs there's some peas in here um, this little tomato this fig is the happiest fig ever this was a cutting three months ago and it is just loving it in the in the greenhouse. These are two mango trees. Um, onions. We, we're trying some turmeric and things that we can't grow here. Sweet potatoes. Uh, see how they do. This tomato is just loaded. Like from one plant, it feeds us more than we need, and it's insane. Beans ready to go. Flowers. Flowers in full bloom. Uh, trays getting started for uh, a whole bunch of different flowers my wife is doing. Uh, there's some herbs over there. Okay, so this is how I attached it to the, in eight feet of the shop. So I have two windows here. I can actually open those up to do the heat transfer as well. This door we don't use because it's so cold outside. I'll kill all the plants if that opens up. So we just come through the shop. It's like a air hatch um, to protect uh, from the cold going in and out. So, Okay, well, we'll do another uh, video kind of as we go. Uh, I guess like and subscribe. I don't know how much time I have to do this YouTube stuff, but um, we'll see. You can give me a comment if this was helpful. I'm giving this information out as uh, karma because I really appreciated all of the information that other people have put out that gave me a head start and some knowledge for my build. So hopefully this will help someone else planning out theirs. Okay, thanks for watching. I just wanted to add a couple things. So we actually keep it at night because of the tropicals above 10 degrees celsius so the the furnace is set for 10 degrees celsius um, is when it kicks on the wood stove keeps it a little warmer than that usually but on the coldest days it needs that natural gas furnace right now until the thermal mass is up but if it drops below 10 celsius uh, i understand that our tropicals will go dormant so we're keeping it about a zone nine ish 
so nine to ten uh, by doing it this way so our banana is and all our fruit trees they're still producing I have fruit coming new leaves coming growth is slower because of the shorter days shorter light but uh, yeah I just wanted to add that so and I also wanted to add uh, one more thing it's uh, so for all aspects of life like you in the dead of winter where I live it gets really depressing the days are short it is cold outside uh, you can't play outside with the kids so we're able to come in here warm the bones take your jacket off get some vitamin D from the Sun as your the soils have an antidepressant you get it on your hands uh, you're picking mineral fresh live food to eat as well so people spend a whole lot of money on their health and um, something like this where I live like lots of people go on a vacation but uh, instead we can come out here every day produce value produce the best food fresh food get our D warm our bones it improves every aspect of our lives so you know instead of buying a lake lot or uh, going on a vacation you know you can do build yourself something like this that provides you lots and lots more value than throughout the entire year as well so that's just um, yeah I wanted to add that how much it's improving our lives so far so thank you